Coming up on Arirang News, South Koreans pay tribute to the late chairman of Samsung, Lee Gon Hee, who died on Sunday at the age of 78, having transformed the South Korean economy. The number of daily COVID-19 cases in South Korea is back above 100. There'll be extra precautions taken to keep the virus from spreading next weekend when young people celebrate Halloween. And at the White House, a little over a week before Election Day, President Trump's chief of staff courts controversy by saying the U.S. is not going to control the COVID-19 pandemic, but focus instead on vaccines and treatments. It's 5 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thanks for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. South Korea on Monday reported 119 new cases of the coronavirus. The first time since last week there have been more than 100. The government will be doing more thorough checks to make sure bars and clubs are following the rules this next weekend because bigger crowds are expected for Halloween. Choi jong yoon has the details. South Korea reported 119 new COVID-19 cases on Monday, bringing the total to nearly 26,000. This puts the nation back in triple digits for the first time in three days. Of them, 94 were local transmissions and 25 were from abroad. Among the cases transmitted locally, most of them are in the greater capital region, 65 from Gyeonggi-do province and 20 from Seoul. The sudden increase is due to cluster infections at high-risk facilities such as rehabilitation hospitals and nursing homes. Gyeonggi-do province reported more than 20 new cases from a facility for people with severe disabilities. Sporadic cluster infections are also popping up among small gatherings, private academies and workplaces. Nine more cases related to a ballet school in Puchan City have been reported, bringing the total infections from that cluster to 22 people, including elementary school students and their families. Other cluster infections have been reported among workers from a fabric company in Gyeonggi-do province and a call center in Seoul. Despite comparatively fewer tests conducted over the weekend, the daily tally has risen to the triple digits, putting health authorities on their toes. Concerns grow over the increasing number of hikers in the autumn season and the risk of the virus spreading among young people at bars and clubs this upcoming Halloween on Saturday. There are currently 53 severely ill patients and with no additional deaths, the death toll remains at 457. Choi Jong-yoon, Arirang News. A little over a week until Election Day in the U.S., President Donald Trump and his Democratic challenger Joe Biden in the final days of their campaigns. Tens of millions of people have already cast their ballots. The Trump administration is under fire, though, after a White House official said that COVID-19 is not going to be controlled. Han sung has the details. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows said Sunday, local time, in an interview that the U.S. is, quote, not going to control the pandemic. He explained that although containment efforts are being made, the government will focus on mitigation factors like vaccines and therapies, knowing that COVID-19 is contagious like the flu. Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden called the controversial statement a candid acknowledgement of President Donald Trump's strategy to wave the white flag of defeat and hope the virus would simply go away by ignoring it. Disagreement even came within the Republicans, with Senator John Toon saying that leaders have the responsibility to wear masks and encourage social distancing to stop the virus from spreading. This comes amid another potential outbreak in the Trump administration. At least five people in Vice President Mike Pence's inner circle have tested positive. Pence himself reportedly tested negative and will resume his campaign schedule. Nearly 60 million people have cast early votes in what some are calling the most important election in generations. New Hampshire was Trump's latest stop in his re-election campaign. The day before on Saturday, Trump voted for himself in Florida and held rallies in three other states, North Carolina, Ohio and Wisconsin, before returning to the White House. He claimed that the nation is turning the corner on COVID-19 and mocked Biden for holding rallies at drive-ins. Biden spent Saturday in his home state of Pennsylvania, a key battleground, where he slammed Trump for his response to the pandemic. He said that the U.S. death toll of more than 220,000 means Trump does not deserve a second term. Former President Barack Obama also held a drive-in rally in support of Biden in Florida on Saturday. With no in-person rally scheduled for Sunday, Biden hosted a virtual I Will Vote concert. Meanwhile, his running mate Kamala Harris campaigned in Michigan. Han Sung-woo, 
Arirang News. The chairman of South Korea's Samsung Group, Lee Kun Hee, died on Sunday at the age of 78 after a long illness. From the late 80s, Lee was an icon in the development of South Korea as an economic powerhouse. With more, our Om Ji Young is outside the funeral hall where his funeral is taking place. Ji Young. Devin, I'm here at Samsung Medical Center in Seoul's Gangnam-gu district, where a memorial for the late Samsung chairman Lee Kun Hee is. Being held, visitors are coming to pay their respects for the men who made the South Korean company Samsung a global household name. Lots of reporters are here waiting in front of the entrance of the funeral home to see who visits and trying to get a few words from them. The heads of Samsung, Samsung's affiliates and figures in financial circles came to pay their respects. Many politicians have also visited to express their condolences. Take a listen. I am very sad that an honorable man has passed away. Lee implanted the spirit of being number one into every aspect of the business world. He has always treated me warmly. The late chairman Lee Kuan Yew has upgraded the status of South Korean businesses, including the semiconductor sector, and contributed to creating jobs. I pay him respect and thank him. President Moon Jae-in sent a floor of tribute and a message of condolence to Lee's family and the U.S. ambassador to South Korea, Harry Harris, visited and paid his respects. The International Olympic Committee on Sunday also expressed its condolences as Lee was a significant figure in South Korean sports and served as an IOC member for more than a decade. Well, Ji Young, Samsung said Lee Kun Hee's funeral will be small in accordance with the wishes of the late chairman and his family. The memorial altar also off limits to the media and the public. That's right, Devin. Samsung earlier said that they respectfully declined visitors from others. Uh, as part of the prevention measures, all mourners should wear masks, electronically check in by scanning their QR code, and get their temperatures checked before entering the altar. An online memorial altar has been set up at Samsung's internal system for employees to mourn Lee's death. Lee's body was placed in a coffin on Monday morning at around 9 a.m. in a one Buddhist style, as Lee and his family are followers of the religion. Lee's memorial altar was set up in the basement of Samsung Medical Center on Sunday, as Lee was hospitalized at this facility for more than six years following a heart attack in 2014. The funeral is expected to run for four days, ending with Lee's burial on Wednesday. His burial site will reportedly be in Yongin, south of Seoul, where his ancestors are located. That's all I have for now. Back to you, Devin. All right, Om Ji Young, thank you for that. Samsung is now expected to transition to a new leader in the late chairman's son, Lee Jae Yong. Some have speculated that Samsung could undergo some governance restructuring. There's also the issue of inheritance tax for the children of Lee Kun Hee, who could have to pay billions of dollars. Kim Sung Min reports. Following the death of Lee Kun Hee, the succession process for South Korea's top conglomerate becomes a new center of attention. Lee Jae Yong, Samsung's de facto leader, has been spearheading the company's management since 2014, when his father collapsed due to a heart attack. His succession is almost complete, as South Korea's fair trade watchdog formally recognized Lee Jae Yong as the group's chief two years ago. While questions were immediately raised as to whether the group will undergo massive governance restructuring, the fact Lee Jae Yong already has a strong grip on the group makes that unlikely. However, as the ruling Democratic Party of Korea is in the process of passing reform bills preventing insurance firms investing more than 3% of their total assets, this could become a variable for the group's current structure. Some industry watchers assume Lee Jae Yong will sell some of his Samsung Life stocks to acquire his father's stocks in Samsung Electronics and Samsung CNT. Lee Kun Hee held around 4% of common stocks in Samsung Electronics and was the largest shareholder of Samsung Life Insurance at more than 20% among others, leaving behind around 16 billion U.S. dollars in assets. For Lee Jae Yong to inherit all of them, he would have to pay around 9 billion dollars in inheritance tax. The record high tax makes it unlikely he will inherit all his father's assets, but he can still choose to leverage his current financial assets to acquire at least some of them, such as by selling some of his own stocks. The family can also choose to spread payments of the taxes by up to five years under South Korean law. 
The LG Group family earlier decided to pay their taxes over five years when they inherited assets from their late chief. Some industry watchers say the Yi family could possibly donate some of the assets to society since the tax is so high. Kim Sung-min, Arirang News. Time now for an in-depth look at the market news on this Monday. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Yang jun sup Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, thank you for coming on today. Happy to be here. Well, with the death of Samsung Chairman Lee Gun-hee on Sunday, it's going to be something of a new era for the company. What do you think the future holds for Samsung? Okay, well, uh, going back just a little bit, you know, even though they, were, they did receive a lot of criticism, Lee Gun-hee and his father, Lee Byung-chul, are considered the best business managers of all the Chebors, especially if you consider both father and sons over the two generations. Uh, Samsung was one of the few Chebors where the son was considered as good or a better leader than his father, uh, and he's responsible for changing Samsung's focus to quality rather than cost and completing the shift to a high-tech company. Now, uh, Lee Gun-hee was in coma for six years after the heart attack, so the effective control of the company was already passed to Lee Jae-yong. Uh, and even the uh, nonprofits that were controlled by Lee gun uh, they were uh, their uh, control was also passed to Lee Jae-yong. Uh, so in some sense, if you talk about the actual management, hard work has already been done. Switchover has already been made. Uh, but where it does make some difference is that Lee Jae-yong might have kept a fairly uh, low profile because his father was still alive. And in the Korean culture, it doesn't uh, look good for the son to uh, take complete control before his father uh, is completely uh, has passed on. Uh, so if uh, Lee Jae-yong has an uh, adventurous spirit, uh, that may have been kept under, uh, under wraps. Uh, but now... Uh, because his father has passed away, uh, he may be able to feel more freer to make his mark on management. Uh, but uh, so far, well, Igani was known for being sort of an engineer wannabe. Uh, he, on his off times, uh, instead of going out to a uh, party or to drink with uh, his fellows, uh, he was known to stay at home, read technical manuals, and take uh, apart electronic equipment to uh, look at their parts and see how they worked. Lee Jae-yong doesn't seem to be that hands-on, so we'll have to see what kind of uh, management uh, path he'll go on to. But as I mentioned, a lot of the hard work on passing the actual management has already been done. Uh, what uh, difficulties may remain is uh, concerning some of the uh, legal aspects of the case. There is a court case against Lee Jae-yong uh, when he took over uh, the uh, Samsung stock, uh, Samsung uh, management. There were some questions about uh, the per, uh, stocks that he purchased, whether he ma manipulated the value of Samsung biologic stocks. Uh, that case is still pending. And then, as mentioned in the last story, there is a question of how they're going to deal with the estate tax, which is 50 percent of value of inheritance. Uh, that's reported to be about 11 trillion won or $9 billion. So on that aspect, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but the uh, real interesting question is going to be, I don't think it's going to make too much difference of Samsung for uh, the long run. I would be interested, though, on seeing whether Lee Jae-yong is going to be as hands-on as his father was. Well, now moving on to the stock market, uh, Wall Street was mixed on Friday. Tech shares leading the S&P and the Nasdaq higher, but uh, the Dow slipping a bit. Korean shares lower today, especially the Kosdaq. What's the story in the markets? Okay, well, the global stocks has been relatively uneventful. The uh, S&P, Nasdaq, and Dow Jones in the U.S., uh, they've been over the week, over the last week, it's been slightly up, but it's been more or less flat. Uh, but on, uh, when the markets open today, uh, the markets are expected to go down. Uh, some interesting factors do seem to be, though, that uh, Professor Robert Schiller of Yale does regular surveys of uh, investors, and there seems to be a very high concern of, uh, with the investors uh, that there may be a stock market crash. And uh, Professor Schiller was saying that uh, he, may, he is concerned whether this type of worries can become a self-fulfilling prophecy but basically, uh, the U.S. seems to be taking a wait-and-see attitude uh, to see what happens after the uh, presidential elections. Uh, Europe, 
as well. They're uh, basically, uh, they haven't been doing as well as the U.S. Their markets have been basically falling for the last week overall. Uh, but again, they seem to be in a wait and see attitude. Asia. Uh, Hong Kong and Ch- uh, China seem to be going in opposite directions. When one side does well, the other side does not. Shanghai fell most of the last week, even though they reported a 4.9% uh, eco- uh, GDP growth for the th- third quarter, and that's a, p- a positive 07 growth for the year so far. But even this did not match the analyst's expectations, so the uh, stock in uh, Shanghai seems to be falling. But stock in Hong Kong... Uh, seems to be rising uh, for the last week. Uh, Japan's Nikkei fell for the last week as well. Uh, the uh, falling stocks are basically uh, seem to be due to rising co- uh, coronavirus in U.S. and EU, as well as waiting for presidential elections in the U.S. Korea, a uh, similar story. Uh, Kospi and Kostak has been falling since last Wednesday. It fell again today slightly for the Kospi, but quite uh, largely for the uh, Kostak. Uh, uh, but Korea as well, they seem to be taking a wait and see attitude. Well, we're almost out of time, Professor. It's the start of a new week, though. What's on your radar in the days ahead? Okay, for Korea, the third quarter advanced GDP growth estimates are due uh, this week, as well as the consumer sentiment and business sentiment uh, indices. Uh, for the foreign side, U.S. trade account is supposed, uh, supposed to be out, as well as the U.S. third quarter advanced GDP growth estimates. Uh, this will be the last uh, economic figure that's going to be out before the U.S. presidential elections next year, so we'll have to see how that affects the elections. European Central Bank monetary policy speech is all also due next week. That'll give some indication on how bad the uh, recession due to the uh, coronavirus uh, coming back in force in Europe is. Uh, And uh, we'll have to see how uh, what chances the uh, European Central Bank gives for European recovery during this year. All right, Professor, we'll have to leave it there for today. Thanks so much for sharing your insights. Thank you. That does it for this newscast. Thank you for watching.